There are several common age-related disorders of the cardiovascular system. And in fact, hypertension is not only a common um, age-related disorder that affects the cardiovascular system, but it's actually the most commonly diagnosed age-related disorder altogether. And so hypertension is really defined as high blood pressure. And it occurs in over 50% of people over the age of 65. And when we um, have kind of a vague definition like this, such as high blood pressure, we really have to establish some parameters for what that means. Um, and so normal blood pressure is somewhere in the range of 120 for the systolic or kind of the top number pressure over 80, which is the diastolic pressure, right? And so 120 over 80 and anything below that uh, is considered kind of normal blood pressure. Anything above 130 over 90, as you can see here, is considered hypertension. Um, and the higher your blood pressure rises, either both, or either the systolic or diastolic, the worse your hypertension is considered, right? And so um, blood pressure that is kind of averages near 130 over 90 would be a less critical hypertension than someone whose blood pressure averages over 140 um, or over 90 in the case of the diastolic pressure. And so hypertension is mostly a result of stiffening or hardening of, hardening of the arteries that decreases blood flow. And when we decrease blood flow and the arteries are stiff and hard and unable to expand in response to blood, the same volume of blood is trying to flow through, right? And so that increases the pressure on the arteries. And that increase in pressure is what leads to hypertension. Hypertension is relatively easy to treat, but it can lead to some kind of other disorders. Most often we use medications to treat hypertension. And some of those you can see listed here, including beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and diuretics. Beta blockers um, and ACE inhibitors and diuretics have different mechanisms of action that are sort of beyond the scope of this course, but their main function is to decrease resistance to blood flow, leading to a decrease in blood pressure. Diuretics, for example, um, are sort of those drugs that we associate with having to um, increase urination, right? And so diuretics make you pee. And the reason for that is because they um, prevent action of antidiuretic hormone. And they basically allow water to move from your blood into your urine in the kidneys. And this increase in blood flow or increase in water movement from the blood in the kidneys to the urine results in one increased urine production and a decrease in blood volume. And that decrease in blood volume can decrease the resistance to blood flow and lead to a decrease in blood pressure. One other common age-related dis uh, disorder of the cardiovascular system is atherosclerosis. And atherosclerosis literally means a hardening of the arteries. This process um, of atherosclerosis formation is pathological and begins um, at a can begin at a relatively young age. And in order for atherosclerosis to kind of manifest, plaques form in arteries like this one up here. You can see those plaques in yellow and build up on the walls of the arteries and ultimately create blockages. These plaques are mostly composed of cholesterol, specifically one type of cholesterol, the low density lipoproteins or LDL cholesterols. And so building, the buildup of these plaques begins kind of slowly. And as um, the buildup of plaque continues over time, as you can see here, it can actually end up blocking an entire artery. If an artery becomes about 85% blocked by a plaque, it dramatically affects blood flow. And it usually takes about 40 to 50 years for an artery to become this blocked by um, a plaque, which is why this disease is so associated with age, right? Because you can't actually 
have atherosclerosis um, because you need enough time to build up the plaques, and that time is about 40 to 50 years. Ultimately, if plaques do block blood flow in an artery, it can lead to a loss of blood flow, which is also kind of known as ischemia. So ischemias are any disorder where there's inadequate blood supply and therefore inadequate oxygen supply to the tissues. So atherosclerosis can lead to these ischemias or ischemic events. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, and so you can see here the formation of kind of atherosclerosis plaques uh, at beginning early in life and then continuing to advanced age. And what you'll notice is that <clears throat> this process of atherosclerosis can actually begin really, relatively early in life. Um, autopsies of um, infants and young toddlers have shown that there's actually some evidence of fatty streaks, which is the beginning of atherosclerosis sclerotic plaques um, in these individuals, so very young age. Um, that cholesterol start to become deposited on the surface of the blood vessel. And these plaques can continue to build up. And you can see that adipose tissue here in yellow, or that cholesterol. What's interesting is that once this happens, um, these plaques can actually recruit cells from the immune system, such as macrophages and T cells, and create kind of an immune response in this area as well. <clears throat> and normally these plaques begin kind of externally or on the outside as much as possible. Um, but as those plaques remain um, stuck to the artery walls or arterial walls, cells from the smooth muscle underneath can actually come up and invade these adipose tissues, and it becomes sort of an amalgamation of smooth muscle and fat, which makes it difficult to get rid of. Not only do these plaques accumulate in one place, they can actually break off and then travel through an artery or blood vessel <coughs> and attach somewhere else, creating blockages in different places. And some risk factors that contribute to atherosclerosis are, of course, age, right? And so um, there's a higher risk of developing this the older that you get. But there are also some environmental factors that contribute to atherosclerosis, such as smoking, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol in the blood. And high cholesterol in the blood is sort of an obvious one, right? If these plaques are composed mostly of cholesterol, having a high level of cholesterol circulating means it's easier for those and cholesterol molecules to find a plaque, attach to it, and continue creating a blockage. Atherosclerosis, as I said, can lead to ischemic events or blockages of blood vessels that restrict blood flow. Um, and this particularly affects, um, can particularly affect two organs, the heart and the blood, which rely heavily on a pretty constant supply of oxygenated blood. And so like other organs, the heart needs blood as well. Right. And so the heart is supplied by specific arteries called coronary arteries. And you can see those on the outside of this heart on the image on the right. Atherosclerosis can actually lead to blockage of these coronary arteries. And blockage of one of the four can lead to ischemic heart disease or heart disease that results from inadequate blood flow to the heart. If those arterial blockages in the coronary arteries end up blocking blood flow, um, by greater than 85% <coughs> can result in what's known as a myocardial infarction or a heart attack. And the longer that this blockage persists, the greater the chances are that the tissue of, that's usually supplied by these arteries will die due to lack of oxygen. Um, additionally, atherosclerosis can increase the risk of strokes which are ischemic events in the brain or loss of blood flow events to the brain. And most commonly, um, <coughs> this occurs because a piece of an atherosclerotic plaque or an embolus, as it's also known, can break off from one of those plaques clogging an artery and block a blood vessel in, their, in the brain or that leads to the, the brain. Most commonly, strokes occur um, because of a blockage of the carotid artery, which you can see here in the neck. And the carotid artery is responsible for supplying blood to all of these smaller blood vessels above. And so um, 
atherosclerosis can lead to blockage of this artery, and that in turn leads to stroke. Um, and the kind of outcomes of a stroke are different based on what part of the brain loses its blood supply. Because the brain, like the heart, needs a constant supply of oxygenated blood in order to function. And the longer that a stroke or ischemic event goes on, the more damage is done to the tissue that needs that blood supply. And depending on which tissue that is or which part of the brain, the long-term effects um, can be different. <coughs> In terms of what increases the risk of atherosclerosis, um, as I discussed, high cholesterol levels in the blood really um, increase this risk. And so you can see here serum levels of cholesterol on the um, x-axis and then death rate from um, cardiovascular disease on the y-axis. And the higher the serum cholesterol or the higher the level of cholesterol in the blood, the more likely you are to die from cardiovascular disease. And so there's only really so much that reducing cholesterol in your diet can do to solve this. Um, this has only really been shown to be effective for people who have genetic predispositions to atherosclerosis. But there are medications that can help reduce cholesterol levels. Um, the most common ones are called statins, and the most kind of common one of those is Lipitor. And what Lipitor does, and other statins as well, is they actually stop synthesis of cholesterol in the body. And so your body requires cholesterol, right? Um, you need cholesterol to make cell membranes, um, to synthesize other hormones. And so this normal kind of process can be seen here in this image. Acetyl-CoA is converted in several steps to this cholesterol molecule. And what statins do is that they inhibit this kind of intermediate reaction and they decrease the synthesis levels of cholesterol. And most cholesterol is synthesized in the liver, so um, statins tend to work specifically on decreasing synthesis of cholesterol in the liver. And additionally, it's not clear how this works, but they also seem to increase expression of cholesterol receptors in the liver, which leads to more cholesterol taken in to the liver and out of the blood. So not only are you decreasing synthesis of cholesterol and releasing less into the blood when you take Lipitor, but you're also taking more out of the blood as a result of increased expression of receptors. And so medication has been able to um, help manage blood cholesterol levels and reduce the risk of atherosclerosis and uh, cardiovascular disease pretty significantly. Okay. And finally, um, one last age-related disorder affecting the cardiovascular system is congestive heart failure. And congestive heart failure is just a total loss of the ability of the heart to pump enough blood to the tissues to supply them with oxygen. And so the heart just really loses its ability to work efficiently. And this results in an extreme decline in the cardiac output. And that is because of a decrease in the compliance in the ventricles as well as contractility. The decrease in compliance means that the heart can no longer fill with enough blood to supply the body. And the decrease in contractility means that the heart can't pump with enough force to get that uh, declining amount of blood out. And so during heart failure, failure um, blood actually is not being pumped efficiently. There's less blood um, being moved around the body and it can, the blood can actually back up within the veins. Um, and to deal with this increase in pressure, the fluid that's in the blood, the water, leaves the blood and enters the surrounding or interstitial tissues. And this leads to um, edema or swelling or fluid retention in particular parts of the body, uh, specifically kind of starting in the extremities. Um, and ultimately, if this ends up happening within the lungs and the blood backs up in lungs, and fluid enters into the lungs, patients can actually drown um, in their own fluids as a result of what's called pulmonary edema. Um, and so congestive heart failure um, is kind of the ultimate loss of the heart's ability to perform its job um, and is highly, highly correlated with age in humans.